So we've recently had the release of Resident Evil 2, and I remember thinking when it came out, because I was searching, trust me, that I was like, there hasn't been one bad article on this game. Not the usual NPC stuff that we always see every time, but, you know, it was just normal praising of a good game. But, you know, good things come to those that wait. (laughs) And then I saw this come across my Twitter feed. I wish Resident Evil 2... Let me be a more compassionate hero. Thank you. We got one! So, I was kind of surprised to see this. I gotta be honest. Because, for one, you know, we just had 2,000 layoffs in the, hand quotes, media journalism area. Yeah, this is real journalism right here. But I was even more shocked because it came out of Vice. So this is Waypoint Vice, and they got hit hard. And it's like, so what do we do? We lay people off, and we just keep going back to what we were doing before. So this person's upset because Resident Evil 2 is a scary, effective fantasy of permission and scarcity. But I want to be a different kind of survivor. (laughs) So this person would not be the person to actually survive (laughs) a uh, breakdown of society. And uh, it really shows in this article, and I I found this quite funny. Now, uh, she doesn't have a problem with Claire. No, she has a problem with the police station being used as a shelter to help survivors and that you're running around there and looting it for your own survival. (laughs) So what I really liked about this, though, and we'll just get right off here, is she admits the fact that she never really played the game before, but she tries to act like she knows what this game's all about. Say, I'm playing Resident Evil 2 for the first time. Well, mostly back in 1998, my 14-year-old self scoured the pages of Tips and Tricks magazines, walked through of the game, covering every gameplay beat and plot point. And I played a few minutes of it on a friend's PS1. So I'm familiar with the scenery and structure, <laughs> the quests, the characters. But this is the first time I'm truly experiencing it. No shit. So, of course, it wouldn't be an NPC article if uh, it didn't call the game a little racist. So, after noting how, you know, you're in a police station... At first, I oddly felt a little weird taking things. The station was designed as a shelter during the zombie outbreak. There are carts and bloody sheets, IV stands, boxes of food and medical supplies everywhere. Early on, protagonists Claire and Leon hear a radio message instructing all citizens to head for the station. That notion is wild. The police station, as a fortress, safe haven? That's laughably naive, particularly for people of color. It certainly was in the 90s as well. And really, when has policing in America ever actually been about keeping neighborhoods safe as opposed to keeping a racist status quo up and running? So she then goes on to mock how you're pretty much using your privilege and not healing Marvin. If you don't know who that is, that's this guy right here who's a black guy. And he's wounded. He's the same guy that was in the game in 1998. Of course, she would have known that if she had played the game. It's fairly obvious that she hasn't played this one that much either. So one thing that I've noticed reading through this whole Big old long article. I can just show you how long it is, right? Look at all this nonsense. And one thing that I noticed is it sounds like she's only played the demo. (laughs) I'm not even kidding because she doesn't get past talking about um, even like getting your first like shotgun when you get the shotgun later on. It really sounds like she played the Resident Evil 2 demo that was free. (laughs) <laughs> they they don't even comp games anymore for Vice. They're so broke. <laughs> and uh, she's basically talking about how privileged you are that you don't heal Marvin. 
<laughs> and that, you know, you walk past him all the time and you just heal right in front of him and she starts comparing it to like white privilege. <laughs> So she continues on. I still feel a little bad about looting the place. At first, it felt like this was a nice staging area for what we in EMS call mass casualty incident. So I, of course, went in thinking like an EMT, looking for survivors to help, like the nice dude who saves me from a faulty door, Marvin, who is clearly suffering from some kind of awful wound. I want to help him. Claire wants to help him too, examining that we need to get him to the hospital, but he refuses, and the game doesn't give me any tools for mending wounds or even putting gauze or bandages on something. The only first aid items are hilarious magical herbs and sprays, through the, though the guns and blood look, well, more or less like the actual thing. This is a game about dealing and surviving damage, not healing it. No shit. <laughs> you don't say you don't say a zombie game is about surviving damage what get out of here <laughs> are you kidding me this is uh th this is why i'm saying like it's obvious like have you ever played resident evil it's obvious that you haven't even though you claim you were a big fan from reading the magazine guide <laughs> and uh she goes on a big rant about how the game sets the tone, right? How it sets the tone for you. Well, um, duh, again, like a horror, a horror game, right? When you play something that's about horror and scary stuff and, and trying to get jumps out of you, they absolutely do want to set the tone. It's very vital for the atmosphere. This isn't Grand Theft Auto, Kingdom Hearts 3, Ace Combat or something, Mario. This is this is trying to scare you. It's just like take Friday the 13th or any of those other movies, right? And think about Jason running through the woods, right? You have that, you know, usually no matter who it is, you've got that ominous music kind of setting the mode and the or the mood, right? And you think about that. Now, I would say go watch that scene without the music. It's just some big dude lumbering through the woods with a hockey mask on setting the atmosphere is vital for something like this and that just seems to be kind of just lost on this person you know and it's this is something that's lost in the co-op games that came out for this series and and other things and she doesn't quite get that and this is why you know that she's not a fan like this isn't resident evil isn't a game where you go bandaging people up it's called survival horror for a reason and uh she tries to play it off like she's a fan while turning the narrative into life is strange and calls it a walking sim obviously has no idea about what this game also is which is a metroidvania game which is where you upgrade yourself and unlock areas throughout your progression of the game but let's be clear, this person's upset because the game wasn't political, didn't let her save survivors. <laughs> what, what, what is that game? <laughs> you know, it's, it's always got to be curtailed towards the NPC, right? That's the big thing. And it, it's just funny. It's, it's almost like a high case of narcissism that this genre that is designed to apply to a fan base and bring in new people for said fan base. No, it wasn't designed to fit my narrative. It didn't give me what I want. Wine, wine, wine. It's almost like the ultimate form of narcissist, which is what the NPC are. They are pure narcissists. They think everything revolves around them. There is a really good article that I covered a long time ago about a comic shop that was... Or no, it wasn't about a comic shop. It was about a guy that didn't like going to the comic shop because he basically expected the people that worked there to go in, read his mind, like rub his back while he browsed and uh, make him feel like, you know, king of the world, which, you know, if you need and you have questions, you can go ask, right? But you, it's not, no one's there to hold your hand and make you feel special, Right. So we have our first Resident Evil 2 Agenda article called The Game Racist. 
called the game a uh, pr- privileged towards uh towards the man and it's very obvious once again that the video game journalist didn't even play the game <laughs> she played the demo <laughs> it's so obvious so anyway uh that's all i got like and subscribe hit that notification bell leave a comment let me know what you thought about this what do you think about this video what do you think about this article what do you think about npcs Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Hit that notification bell, and I will see all y'all on the next one. Peace.